Hello and welcome to Three Questions With. Got my buddy Leo Tarko with us. Leo is a mortgage officer. Hey, Leo, welcome to the show. Hey, Kevin, thank you so much for having me and thank you for uh, you know having this tremendous outlet for us. So, Leo, the first question is about the importance of picking a qualified mortgage officer. Because sometimes there's a lot of options out there, a lot of different people doing mortgages. How important is it to find a good, experienced loan officer? Yeah, um, honestly, I mean, have, working with someone that's experienced can be the difference between um, having a positive impact or negative impact on your life. Um, you know, especially when it comes to the home buying process, working with someone that you trust, that you've vetted their skills, their ability, um, gotten verbatims from other individuals, know that that person actually knows what they're doing. You know, you know what happens in, in, you know, a successful type of industry like lending, especially with the period we're going through, is kind of like a flooding of, you know, new loan originators coming to business. And not to say that there's anything wrong with working with someone new, but, you know, that someone that you work with has to have a unique set of skills and understanding for guidelines, for ratios of qualifying. So when you fall in love with that house, and you, and people will, um, and you make that offer, and it gets accepted and the emotions are high and you're pumped and that loan officer goes and submits your loan and you gotta you gotta know that they did the right thing up front as far as qualifying you verifying income verifying assets so that that deal will never blow up you never have to experience that kind of emotion of things not going the way you believed it would because you trusted the person you're working with and then when it comes to refinancing having someone skilled to just identify what's going on in the market, how they can make an impact in your life, rather than just like, oh, you want a lower rate? Like anybody can give you a lower rate. Like who can advise you? Who can benefit you in your life? Like it's tremendously important to find someone that knows what they're doing and to have trust. So Leo, he brought the word refinance. I want to talk a little bit about that because I remember years ago, you know, the kind of rule of thumb was if you can reduce your rate by one full percent, you should refinance. But sometimes maybe you have some consumer debt, you know, that's just that monthly payments are catching up to you. When and, when and how does it make sense to maybe sit down and try to consolidate some of that debt? Yeah, um, you know, a, a, lot of, a lot of when it makes sense really has to do with someone's individual goal, right? Because if I'm only gonna keep my house for five years, does it make sense to refinance if I'm not going to recoup my cost of refinancing in those five years? I mean, that goes back to the first question of being advised properly. Um, but whether it be a point, it could be an eighth of a point. And, and for, you know, for people that don't do lending, like an eighth of a point is 0.1875. It could be that minimal of a drop and it will still save you money. Like who am I to say that $20 a month is an important for you to save? Like, why does it have to be 50? Why does it have to be 200? $20 a month can make a big impact in someone's life. And, and if you can structure these refinances in a way where there's no cost out of a pocket, you know, and I could just say, hey, Kevin, like, I'm going to save you $20 a month. It's not going to cost you a dime. We're not going to raise your loan amount. Like, how would you like to save money? And it was only an eighth of a point. Like, why wouldn't you take the savings? Because the longevity of that monthly savings, it adds up. Right. It obviously adds up faster at two, three hundred dollars a month. Um, but I would say a point is not the marker. I would say if rates are below what you have today, I'm someone you trust, um, you know, more than willing to have it be me and have the conversation, have the conversation and make an educated, informed decision as to whether there's value to you as an individual or not. Um, you know, and then touching on the aspect of consolidating debt. Um, this is a tremendous moment in uh, humanity when it comes to interest rates. In, in our economy, rates have never been this low. You know, you're, you're talking about the, the financial system, never having rates this low, like not your, not your parents, not your grandparents, not your great grandparents, like our time, right this moment now. Um, and what's happening is, is that the purchase in, in the purchase market where people are going out to buy houses, there's so many people trying to buy because there's low rates that there's not as many houses that people are looking for them. So people are paying top dollar for houses. So what that means is, is that if the house next door to you sold for top dollar, that means it's just created tremendous equity in your own 
home just because that's the market move. You know, like equity is based upon, you know, value. Well, let me go back. Valuation of someone's house is based upon what someone is willing to pay. So if someone's willing to pay top dollar for the house across the street from you, well, that means that the value of yours just went up. And that, and when we when we discount the mortgage that you owe now, all that equity is your leverage. Your leverage to consolidate debt, to repair the mistakes of consumerism and racking up credit card debt and auto loans and student loans. Um, or it's a unique opportunity to take advantage of future investments. If I said, hey, Kevin, here's a loan. Here's a check for $200,000. I'm going to charge you 3%. Come up with a plan to make four, five, six, and you win. Or if I'm if I'm saying, hey, here's $50,000, let's eliminate all of your Amex, your Bank of America, your Visa, your MasterCard, you're paying 12, 14, 16% on. What the stuff that keeps you from sleeping at night? And I'm like, it's going to be all gone, locked in under 3% three and a half, like it doesn't matter. It's gonna save you a ton of money. Like I have a family that like, this is probably like one of my greatest joys, like like changing someone's life is something that I just love doing. Um, I have the notes in front of me. This family just closed on their refinance on Thursday. They had tremendous income. You know, the family earned over 190,000 a year combined. Um, haven't refinanced in a long time, but they still had like a hundred and something thousand dollars worth of debt. So they reached out to me to just refinance. And I said, great, let's let's talk about what you want to accomplish. And then through my expertise, I saw different opportunities. So what I ended up doing was putting together choices for them. This is your option to refinance. This is your option to refinance and consolidate your debt. This is your option to consolidate your debt, refinance, and put money in the bank for you. So I gave them the tremendous choices. And here's how it ended up. I ended up, they walked away with $80,000. So when they were done, I put $80,000 in their hand to put in their bank account to build upon their savings, their retirement, their future. I eliminated $2,144 of monthly credit card debt. Wow. Over $2,100. That's like finding a part. It's amazing time job, right? And here's the best of it. Their mortgage payment stayed exactly the same. So I was able to reduce their interest rate on their current mortgage, eliminate $2,100 more or more a month in credit card debt, and them $80,000 towards their nest egg, and their payment didn't change a dime. That's the, that's the importance question one of having someone with expertise and knowledge. Yeah. Too. So last question, Leo, um, we talked quickly about the purchase market. What I see happen is people often think, I can't afford it, I can't afford a house. But yet they're paying $3,000 a month in rent for a nice condo or a nice house someplace. If you're spending that type of money, shouldn't you at least inquire with you saying, hey, you know, what would be my monthly payment? You know, do I qualify for a house? So maybe we could go from renting to owning? Yeah, I mean, 100% without a doubt. I mean, you think about like the board game we used to play as a kid called Monopoly, right? Like Monopoly was designed for like a specified reason. Like it wasn't just a game. It was because it's a, it's a standard basis of life and accumulation of wealth. I'm a big advocate for home ownership is one of the simplistic ways to accumulate wealth and build a future like with immeasurable possibilities. If you could dream it, you can make it happen. It's all possible. And there's verbatims and there's people you can read about that it's it's possible. And I'm one of those individuals that and I know many that are like that also. But like I, I kind of look at it this way, right? If you could through the through the aspect of home ownership reduce one of your major expenses in life, and that is your living expense. The, the cost that it takes to have a roof over your head, to have you know, a shelter, a safe place to call home, a bed to sleep in at night, like all of those things that make you feel safe and alleviate worry, like, like get taken care of through ownership. So if, if you could reduce how much it costs you to live somewhere, you're gonna accumulate wealth faster than anybody else. 
So when you pay rent, you're actually helping people like myself build my future. You know, you're, you're basically building the equity in the home. You're providing cash flow for me. And there's always going to be rentals. Like it's always going to be part of life. But, you know, if you're renting now, like you want to think to yourself, why not me? Why can't I own a home? Like every, people go through these phases in life. Like, why not me? If you're paying $3,000 a month in rent, um, I can guarantee you that you can pick up a nice condo for under $2,000 a month. You can buy a single family home for under $2,500. And then if you think about multi-unit home ownership, which is buying a two-family, three-family, four-family, when there's someone else contributing to that household expense, you're going to accumulate wealth faster, right? Who's, who's going to build wealth faster? The person paying $3,000 a month in rent, the person paying $2,000 in mortgage, or the person that has a two-family where it costs them $2,000 a month, but they're getting $1,500 else in their net cost. Like I can tell you right now, I live where I live for free. And that's because of, you know, the accumulation of assets in home ownership. So like anybody that like wants to be educated, wants to learn, like I would like, a pass I think you can tell that I'm passionate about it because it can very quickly change your life. Like if you go from paying $3,000 a month to all of a sudden you buy a two family and now you're after collecting rent expense, it's like a thousand dollars. Like what a big difference in life it, that would make. Absolutely. So Leo, how can people reach out to you? How can they learn more, my friend? Yeah. So, I mean, the, kind of like one of the easiest ways to find me is like, you know, my name domains right there. It's leoturco.com, L-E-O-T-U-R-C-O.com. You can read all about me, find a bio, find my cell phone, contact information. Uh, also co-founder with my fiance. We're both mortgage lenders. So if you want to talk to two people like us, mm -hmm. uh, we, you know, we co-found the Better Half Lending Team of Superior Mortgage. You can find us on Facebook as the Better Half Lending Team. I'm a real human being. It's just Leo Turco. Look me up and you'll follow me. Leo, yeah, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes to jump on the show. And as always, thanks for being my friend. Thank you so much, Kevin, for the opportunity, for the outlet, and just for doing all that you do to help us. Thank you, bud.